and you, yeah, Julia is with her, with us. Uh, just to uh, tell you, uh, <clears throat> we propose just to save the video of the meeting and just to help us uh, uh, to, to make the, the minutes of the meeting later. So if any problem, please tell us. Uh, and just a small information yesterday, uh, Omilab asked to put uh, uh, a password to get access to the administrative documents of the partners on the website. So it uh, has been created already, the password. So yeah. we are going to put it in, in the chat. And additionally, we will uh, put the password in the minutes of the meeting to inform uh, everybody. But we put it uh, immediately in the chat. Thank okay. you. And Julia, I'm giving you the right to share your screen. OK, shall I start? So you can share, and we wait perhaps one, one more minute until uh, 35 to just thank you. Um, yes, Julia, I think you you can start now. Okay, Thank perfect. You. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning, everyone, again from my side. Um, I want to give a short update uh, on the work package 7, which is about the dissemination. Uh, these are the tasks that we have included in the workshop and also the deliverables. Um, two of the tasks, tasks are actually starting um, now in month seven of the project. Uh, one of them is coordinated by Uni Bergamo, which is about the scientific dissemination of the project activities. And the other task that is starting now is referring to the participation to dissemination events. Um, and the last two tasks are starting um, later on uh, about the definition of the long-term uh, project and the sustainability activities. Um, for the first deliverable, um, it has also again two parts. Um, first part was accomplished in December. And the second part of the deliverable, it's about the, the platform again, uh, which is due in month 33. 33, so this is when everything is available on the platform. Um, but from the for the remaining tasks and also important for the two that are starting now, we have this deliverable 7.2, uh, which has um, uh, three parts referring to the scientific dissemination. So task 2.2, uh, 7.2, <clears throat> and the dissemination events and the exploitation and sustainability plan. Um, again, we have two um, due dates here in month um, 18 and then um, at the end of the, of the project. Um, now I want to give you a short update on what has been happening on the dissemination channels. So first of them is the, our LinkedIn page uh, for the projects. We have 121 followers currently in April. Um, it would be good to grow even more, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm trying every month to do a series of posts so we have a, co a continuous content on the on the page. Uh, we had until now the partner highlight, um, the glossary, so an explanation of the terms that we used in the project, the work package highlight, and now currently we have the work package introduction and description, so what are our objectives for each of them. Uh, what I have coming up and I need your input is um, uh, is the VCC Labs showcase. Um, I can take information from the deliverable 2.1, um, but um, in case I need more, I will come back to you individually with an email. Um, maybe if you want to give a short statement or like some new pictures from the lab, that would be very appreciated. 
And then based on the on the presentation from yesterday, I can now prepare also um, like a results showcase from uh, from work package one to to disseminate via LinkedIn as well. Um, but it's very important and what I ask again of you is to have this proactive communication from your side as well when you have good progress updates because it's very important that we keep this page alive and with um, with a lot of posts. Um, but if you have some bilateral discussions and good progress on some on some tasks, um, I kindly ask you to to let me know as well and then I can prepare content. Uh, for LinkedIn, because I think we do a lot, but um, it's important that it gets out as well. Um, and then also, I think LinkedIn is a good um, way to to get to external people as well. So those that are not within our consortium. So that's why I kindly ask you to invite your connections to follow the page, to engage with the posts, like repost um, and so on, because that's how uh, we are visible to external people as well. Um, then with the website, um, I'm updating the events and activities um, that we have. If you see that uh, something is missing, let me know. Uh, but also um, soon this uh, this page with the events will be updated um, from the individual nodes. So hopefully it will be, I mean, all the activities that we do will be covered. Uh, for the publications, for the scientific dissemination, uh, we have uh, three publications currently. Uh, the first of them uh, has already been accepted. It's a, it's a Springer book. Uh, called the leading and managing in the digital era. Um, I don't have yet the publication date, but it should be this this year. And the other two uh, papers are under review for the ERSIS conference, uh, which is in June, and the Wirtschafts Informatic conference, which is in um, September. Um, and there is an open call for paper submissions, and I I highly recommend you to to encourage. Um, your network and students and colleagues um, to uh, prepare some submissions. Uh, one first of them is the Prove special session, which was mentioned yesterday as well. Um, and then the second one is the workshop at the Beer Conference uh, from the Omelab community, which is about the domain-specific modeling methods and tool. It's an Omelab nodes experience and knowledge exchange. Um, it's not only for the nodes, it's for the whole community. So I think it would be great if you can have also here some papers from, from, from Codem. Uh, the paper submission here is at the end of June. Um, good, we have some good conference participation coming up. Um, in March, uh, we've, we, with the Omela, we've been at the Modelierum conference. We had a booth there, a stand, and we, we raised awareness of the project. We had the flyers and we distributed them. Um, in May, we are at the International Week in uh, Bielefeld. Um, as far as I know, there will be a lecture from um, Ole Bessé and then also um, like the Omilab demonstration showcase uh, from us, from Omilab. In June, uh, with Omilab, we have a tutorial um, at the DESRIT conference, and then we will raise awareness on the project as well. Um, in July is the summer school um, in, in Vienna. We have uh, lectures from project partners. Um, but I also want to take this opportunity to encourage everyone to um, I recommend participants um, for the summer school uh, because this can also it's also part of the activities uh, of the project. So I think you can have budget from there. Would be very appreciated to have uh, participants from the consortium. Um, in October we have the Cebu Innovation Days. Um, um, partners from Marquard, um, um, Ecole de Min, um, Bielefeld, and Omilab will take part. Uh, we have here a, a panel uh, discussion on the project um, uh, from Omila, but we will have a keynote and I think the other persons will also have uh, some um, lectures and presentations, um, as well as a workshop with Marquardt. 
Um, and then in October, it's the Prove conference in France, uh, where we have the boot uh, of, with the project, um, and then also um, the special session. Um, so this is currently what we have planned for the conference participation. Um, regarding other activities, we have the webinar series, and two of them are already complete. Uh, 15 are planned in the whole project. Um, I mean, I kind of regarded the, the, the webinar next week as, as um, done as well. Um, by the way, we have uh, 34 uh, registrations for next week. Um, in July, we have the lectures at the summer school. I mean, this is still in planning and preparation. Um, how can we integrate those with the webinar? In September, as far as I know, it's a, a plan that um, Uni Bialystok will uh, will host a webinar. Uh, but I think more information of, on this on the schedule will come uh, from from work package um, six because there is a, a task on this. Um, we have, of course, the innovation event coming up um, in June in Bergamo, Italy. Um, there is already a page on our on our project website about this. It's like an announcement, a trigger of the event, uh, but it will be updated when we have the final schedule and a short description. Um, and again, I think the next presentation will give more, more details about this. Um, and then we are also starting work on a case study. Uh, we are um, we talked with Marquard and Ulel Desse for a for a workshop for a design thinking workshop uh, between the three partners, and this is what we are currently um, preparing um, to be held in May on a, on a case study that is provided by Marquard. And then uh, the, um, the idea is to present the results um, at the CBU Innovation Days. Um, good. One more thing that we have uh, mentioned in the proposal is that we will have a book publication of the Codemo book. Um, I made a very, very initial and, and a draft uh, proposal for this just to, to remind you about this activity and um, um, to let you know that we will need the contributions from all partners on this book project. Um, uh, with regarding the timeline, I, every, it's um, it's a bottom up approach, so to say. So it's um, we have to decide, I think, first when we would like to have the book, and then to go up um, when we should start um, gathering the, the information about this. Um, for this, I was thinking to have it before the last innovation e event in the last year of the project. But we can also aim, for example, to have it at the end of um, 2025. So at the end of this year, we can start with the preparations. It, in my experience, um, it takes around one year from when we start with the initial information with the working title and so on, the preliminary information about the chapter until the publication date. And of course, it's also have to take into consideration how do we want to publish this, if it's a Springer or it's like another open source access. As, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a lot of open questions, um, <clears throat> but I think maybe somewhere around 15 chapters, like to have contributions from all partners about the case studies that we will de develop about uh, academic curricula, the certification, so uh, to include all the all the content that we will produce. And perhaps we can also invite some external contributors that are relevant to the 5.0 society, to the 5.0 innovation, um, <clears throat> and have them um, in the book as well. Um, but. Yeah, this is just a very draft information, but just to trigger and announce that we have to keep in mind uh, the, the book project as well. Good, uh, this is all from the work package seven, the dissemination update. Um, let me know if you have some questions or if I forgot something. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much, Julia. Uh, so, for any question, please. Uh, if you allow me just to complete a little bit, not to ask, uh, at CB Innovation Days will be participation also from Valencia University. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry that I missed it on the... Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so Milab is doing a an active work to... Um, use all of the material we send them on dissemination and to uh, uh, make an active uh, valorization of uh, all that. So uh, please keep in mind all partners. Anytime you have some kind of uh, events in your institutions or uh, in your country uh, where you are present and you, <clears throat> you have some uh, dissemination or communication on uh, Codemo uh, to uh, send the information systematically to Yulia so that it could be published both on the web page and also uh, in the reporting uh, which is followed by uh, Yulia. And uh, we, we will send you also some additional information from France. Perfect, thank you. And I see there is a comment from Arik um, that the status of the documents um, selective public should be considered. Um, yes, of course. So I mean, for for LinkedIn, it's a kind of just announcing that we did the work, you know, and some highlights of of the pro of the of the project results. But if it's something sensitive, then maybe mention it also in the email uh, that this part should not be public online or something. And what I forget, uh, but we discussed together with Julia, uh, regarding the Codemo roll-up flyer, uh, the, to can uh, put it in the conference or in another event, when do you consider that could have a template or something? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, but then, yeah, again, we ha I can prepare a template for everyone and then we can individually um, print it. I don't know. So we have it available for each partner. Um, yeah, I can come with a design maybe at the end of May, mid of May. Uh, but the flyer is already available. The flyer, yes. yes. Um, and then if I know there was a translation from, um, from uh, Fedakova, if I'm not mistaken, in Spanish. Um, so if some other partners uh, also translated it, um, then yeah, maybe upload it on the on the shared um, on the online on the shared folder, and then I will I will uh, put this also on the website. Thank you, and um, also perhaps some of the. Universities have uh, good experiences on uh, book publishing because we have uh, acquired quickly now take a strategy. Is it an open access book or a, a, a physical uh, book also? And so uh, perhaps we we will uh, make a, a short uh, yes exchange by email first or if necessary a short uh, meeting. Uh, to to take this uh, key orientation in the coming months uh, with uh, with uh, you guys. Yeah, that's why I think it's also important to know when we would like to have the book out because yeah. it takes like up to a year to to finish the whole process. Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, if there is no other question, I can see, yeah, okay. Um, I just remind you that you have already on the chat the password for um, Codemo project for the administrative uh, documents uh, uh, directory. And 
And now uh, the schedule of the agenda of the meeting is to switch to work package five. So um, I can see that uh, Ramona Leon is here with us. Dear uh, Ramona, or, are we ready to uh, switch to work package five now? Or? Good morning, everyone. We will start in a moment, as soon as I manage to share basically the pile. Let's see. Just a second. Okay. Do you manage to see it? Yes. Perfect. So we are in charge basically on the vocational certification deployment, which starts in month six and it ends at the end of the project. The objective of this work package is basically to put in practice at the institutional level, all the things that we have developed so far. So the main objectives are to create a vocational certification, starting basically for defining what are we going to deliver, what are the skills that we are going to deliver and how we are going to do it. Therefore, it focuses on developing and deploying the teaching materials and methods using basically all the work that had been previously done in work package one and in work package three. And at the end, the quality assessment is important and the feedback in order to continue the improvement. The tasks that are going to be taken into account in order to achieve these objectives. Already are four of them defined in the project and stuff like that. And basically it starts with defining the curricula, which focuses on establishing the learning objectives and the specification of the learning path in which case work package three has, and all the results that have been obtained in work package three have a major impact. Then we'll focus on deploying the teaching materials and methodology, which basically means implementing at the local level, all the materials that are developed within the partners, among the partners. Further, we have the certification delivery where we basically implement everything and put it into practice, which means delivering all the teaching materials supported by the blending learning approach and generating the certification, the open badge and the micro credentials. And the last task that is basically going to be continuous focuses on quality assessment and in this case, we will use the protocols, the quality protocols that have been developed in work eight. Some of them are already available. And furthermore, we will take into account the feedback that the participants are going to offer in order to continue the improvement. Within this work package, basically all the partners are involved, but the focus is on Bergamo Sviluppo which represents basically the industry, Fedakova that represents the agri-food sector and Campus del Talents that focuses on the healthcare sector. We focus on you having a first interaction with them in order to identify the skills that have to be developed, the network that they have. And starting from there, we define the learning objectives and how the learning path are going to be implemented. Further, we thought about letting each and every one of them to present what they have, because on the first analysis, it seems that there are some differences between that the skills that they need and the one that had been identified in work package one. And in order to make sure that everything is in line, we are going to adapt all the content of the learning materials and the teaching methods. Now, I think I will let the colleagues from Bergamo Svilupo to present a little bit the network and the needs that they have identified. If it's okay with you. Mm 
Yok sen? Yuxin, uh, in, I think, is around. Yes. Seeing that it is coming here. And if you want you Yuxin, you can also put your video on, but you need to put your uh, micro on also. Currently, it is muted. Yes. Good. Can you see me? Yes. I'm going to present uh, the agency. Don't you send it? No, I can. And you, you seen it seems that we cannot hear you still. Yes. Daniela is speaking uh, for uh, Bergam Zulupo. Uh, can you hear Daniela? Daniela, no. 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 Just a moment, please. Yeah. Now? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm You can uh, also put your video if you want. The video is on. Okay, good. No okay. <laughs> okay. Um Bergamo Sviluppo is uh, the special agency of Chamber of Commerce of Bergamo and um, it is the driving force behind the spread of an innovation culture to over 93,000 businesses as well to students, to unemployed and employed people, entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, is a recognized player in Bergamo area for its commitment to foster innovation. And uh, we offer um, a comprehensive suite of services to support business uh, of all sizes, from startups uh, to uh, established uh, companies. Our service uh, are uh, for training. We offer a variety of training programs, both in person and uh, online on topics uh, such as uh, business innovation, digital marketing, uh, intellectual property, self-employment uh, skills. Uh, and uh, these programs are designed to help uh, businesses and individuals develop to the skills they need uh, to innovate, uh, create new businesses, to improve the skills. And uh, we provide also consult consulting services to business on a variety of topics, uh, including innovation strategies, uh, marketing research, business planning, and problem solving. And uh, we manage a business uh, incubator that provides uh, share workspaces, uh, uh, mentorship, assistance, uh, and consultancy to aspirating or new entrepreneurs. In addition of these services, Bergamo Sviluppo also organizes events and workshops on innovation, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, digitalizing services, and so on, because uh, we are part of a national network uh, of uh, digital enterprise point, in Italian is Punto Impresa Digitale, PID, uh, for dissemination of uh, basic um, digital knowledge. It also accredited as a digital innovation hub um, and uh, directs uh, 
businesses with more specific needs uh, to the competence centers that are highly specialized, um, uh, such as the University of Bergamo. And of course, we collaborate uh, with university and uh, with uh, many other partners. And um, we can help uh, businesses to all sides to grow and succeed. And uh, the Digital Enterprise Point of Bergamo has been recognized as a PID Experience Lab since uh, 2023 due to the presence of uh, experiential laboratories that enable the dissemination of knowledge through hands-on experience in the following areas, advanced and collaborative robotics, Internet of Things and Machines, Big Data and Analytics, Augmented Reality, Virtual Reality and 3D Reconstruction, Simulation and Cyber Physical Systems. The result of uh, Work Package 1 identifies skills needs for the manufacturing sector and uh, some, exam some examples are uh, for digital oriented, artificial intel intelligence, data protection and management, cloud technologies, and for resilience uh, oriented is uh, developing uh, competencies required for innovation, problem solving, for green oriented, sustainable design of products and services, design of and use of resource efficient technologies, and for human centered reskilling, upskilling needs and development of communication skills. Furthermore, based uh, on the survey and deliverable one, Approximately two thirds of the representatives of organization are mostly interested in participating in webinars and workshops. Therefore, our idea to foster the transition to industry 5.0 involves uh, organizing uh, a short training program consisting of two workshops focusing on artificial intelligence, a webinar discussing technological solution for immersive, interactive, and uh, participatory navigator, navigation, augmented reality, virtual reality, and 3D reconstruction, and uh, webinar addressing the develop, development of communication skills. And the activities will be done between months uh, 13 and 35, approximately. Thank you. Thanks you, uh, Daniela. We give you the floor back, uh, Ramona, yes. Okay. Yes. Further, we will invite Juan Jose from Fedakova to present the perspective of the organization he's handling basically in the agri-food sector. Um, currently, we cannot hear uh, currently. I'm so sorry. Okay, I just, uh, good morning, everyone. I just start. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you for your work and your commitment in this project. It's a big pleasure to be part of it. And I'm so sorry because uh, yesterday I was unable to attend the whole meeting. I was entering and exiting. It's a lot of work after Easter. <laughs> Okay, just uh, let's start. I am Juanjo Rico from Fedacova, and with Sergio, Alicia, and Laura, uh, we are working in this project as a pet partner. Uh, Fedacova is a private institution created in 1991. Uh, we represented the 70% of the agribusiness in the Valencia region. And we got uh, 30 different associations and more than 2,000 companies affiliated as uh, members. 
Pedacoa provides services in quality and food safety, internationalization, innovation, training, of course, among others. Okay. I can. Okay, I just uh, would like to provide you an overview of the agribusiness sector just to frame the project and Fedacova's scope, which is mostly uh, Valencia region. Those are uh, macroeconomic agribusiness data comparing Europe, Spain, and Valencia region. As you can see, this is agribusiness companies' figures. About the size, uh, this is the three scenarios. Uh, as you can see, the micro companies, less than 10 workers, are the most representative in the three scenarios. This is the turnover of the agribusiness companies in Europe, Spain, and, and Valencia region. And employment, because it's important for this project, uh, we have uh, in Valencia region 40,000 workers. That means 40,000 40, new learners, or possible new learners. Okay, our network of collaborators will be, will be made up of companies, their workers, and self-employed professionals. We are going, we, we have uh, 30 different uh, associations, but we are going to focus in the following artists and agribusiness sectors, among others, especially nougat, tiger nut drink, drink, ice cream makers, bakery and bachelor. We will obtain this information from our entire network through the next following channels, especially service, workshops, events, knowledge transfer, conferences, mailings, meetings, and other sectoral contacts. Okay, about the courses approach. Uh, from an initial characterization of needs and opportunities, for the companies, workers, and self-employed professionals, linked to the results obtained in the project survey, we have identified we need to focus, or we need we might need to focus on the following training actions among all, among others. Uh, from the digital perspective, e-commerce, for sure, e-market, e-marketing, as a new way of communication. Now uh, we have identified that the social media is a uh, quite important to everyone, small, medium and big companies, but uh, the small shops now, they are working a lot with uh, the media and the influencer marketing. It's a, a new way to sell products. Uh, and maybe uh, we need to train some people in this kind of matters, like shopping, everything mixed with artificial intelligence, big data. It's really interesting. Okay, cybersecurity is uh, number one required in, in the, the whole world. All the companies want wants, uh, wants some worker who knows something about cybersecurity. The same for the how to use chat GPT. Electronic invoicing platforms, yeah, because in 2025, uh, it's coming a, a, a regulation in Spain at least to to have this, this uh, to change from the paper to, to uh, invoicing, electronic invoicing for, the, for all the companies, the big, the small, for everyone. 4.0 industrial software, everyone who knows how to manage the enterprise resource planning, I mean, industrial agribusiness sector, it's uh, important. We need to focus on that too. The digital twin system, because we are companies and, and, and we need to simulate process and create the scenarios to, to avoid necessarily investments and to reducing costs. And it's important to, to have people, to have workers to, to know something about that. From the green, from the green perspective, uh, because of the climate change, because of the lack of rain, the water management is so important for us sustainability, everything about the 2030 objectives, sustainable development goals from the United Nations, everything about that is, is quite, quite significant for the companies. Packaging, now uh, it's coming a, a 
very restricted uh, regulation from Europe about the, the plastic usage. And you know, in agribusiness sector, uh, plastic is uh, the best material for the for the food, for the conservation, and for for everything. Food waste, food waste prevention. And uh, now already in Spain, uh, we have a, a regulation, and you need to control as a company uh, the the food waste in your stock. Uh, you need to have a Excel file with uh, with you put your your tons of waste a month. Uh, the contacts with the NGOs and food banks. Uh, it's important to have people who know who knows uh, how to manage these kind of matters. Waste waste valorization is uh, number one for the companies, every business company now, uh, because uh, we have maybe 10, 15 percent of waste on our productions, and we need to valorize it. We need to reduce it. We need to prevent it. We need to do something because we are companies and we need to, 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 to have people to, uh, to know uh, how to manage this waste and the logistics is super important too. The renewable energies is the same. It's another uh, possible training action. Uh, the, I mean basics, okay? Because uh, uh, a lot of companies, they are uh, want to, to, to change <clears throat> From the from the renewable energies because it's more efficient and it's economic. There are grants and there are a lot of regulations and and maybe it's good to have people to know about that. Environment taxes and bonifications is uh, is the first one because uh, uh, you are a company and you need to reduce costs to pay less taxes and to get bonifications. Now uh, uh, European Union promote uh, the environment actions with this kind of bonifications, and we need to have this kind of people to know about it. Eco-friendly strategies, for sure. Now the customer is uh, eco-friendly minded, and, and we need to, to give to the customer <clears throat> what they need and what they want. And from human-centered uh, perspective, uh, we might need uh, some training actions in compliance, branding, corporate social responsibility. But uh, the first one is soft skills, as in the WRO one has identified. And we are working in an agreement with a, a major uh, business school in Valencia. And we have identified together that the soft skills is, is, is really demanded. Okay, and not only for the executive about leadership, problem solving, negotiation, just about for the worker in general, empath empathy and, and it, this kind of soft skills is, is quite valuable. The customer behavior, uh, we need to, to have people to how to manage, analyze and measure this, this customer behavior because it's very important for the companies. Virtual reality now, we are working in a project. It's, it's, it's quite interesting because uh, you are uh, using uh, digital uh, scenarios. You can imagine it's a, a supermarket and, and you are the worker and, and it's a cashier, you know? And uh, uh, there's a, a customer who, who comes to you and fell off the back and you have to help her. And it's very good for learning, for new learning. And I, I guess it's a, a new uh, possibility and, and we, we have to be there. And just and last uh, but not least, uh, the bakery and battery specialization and needs. We don't have in, in Spain a regulated education for those subsectors, okay? We need at least a professional training for medium level. <clears throat> We have in Spain a generic good industry models, but not a specialization. We are working now on that, okay? You know, the, the president of the Butchers told me last, last month, our artisan shops, Panjo, are like a libraries. When you close one of them, we lose our knowledge. We gotta hold that knowledge and just transfer to the new students. We need to do it, we need to help them 
uh, survive, <laughs> basically. Okay, and thank you for your attention. If you have further questions, I am here for you. Thank you very much, uh, Juan Jose. It was a quite broad view on uh, all your needs and it's really interesting. You're, wel you're welcome, Xavier. I think we will take questions after the third presentation, I think. We follow Ramona. Thank you, Juanjo. We will continue with Campus de Talent. And as far as we know, Annette wasn't able to be here due to previous arrangements. But Teodora is going to do the presentation. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Teodora Yonkuba, a health um, project manager in the develop, uh, Department of Innovation, Research and Development of ASIO Santé. I represent here uh, the director, uh, Guillaume Gardin. A part of uh, CODEMO, we are uh, developed training for managers on uh, uh, Industry 5.0 applied uh, in health. We will uh, perform uh, diagnostics uh, after pharmacy and uh, home services uh, manager on their needs regarding the three key dimension of Industry uh, 5.0. We uh, objective is to build a training offer provided by uh, the Campus des Talons to develop uh, the digital and the organizational skills of health managers. Now I uh, will present the first work done by the Campus des Talons. Unfortunately, uh, their director, Annette uh, Belay, is absent today. But she did a recorded uh, presentation that uh, I will uh, launch. If you have uh, uh, any questions, uh, please send them by mail to Xavier, maybe. Uh, we will uh, answer you uh, in the best time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Theodora. Yes, we have it now. It's okay. We have it, yeah, on the screen. I think you can launch it. It seems to be good. Currently, we don't hear. Ah, we don't have the sound. Uh, yeah, I think when you share a screen, you have to cross also the audio that you want to share the audio as well. You should stop sharing the screen, and then we see when you start again um, at the bottom of the window, there is also you have to click that you want to share the audio. Non, non, c'est pour Théodora. Quand elle partage la vidéo, Théodora, lorsque vous partagez la vidéo, il y a une option pour partager aussi le son. Donc arrêtez le partage et lorsque vous refaites le partage de vidéo, il y aura une option à cocher qu'il faut partager aussi le son. Le plus simple, à mon avis, c'est de recommencer. Arrêtez le partage et le recommencer. Mais voilà. Et là, vous le relancez et vous allez avoir une petite case à cocher. Pour partager aussi le son. Voilà. Et là où je trouve le partage 
En fait, c'est au moment où vous partagez, il vous demande, au moment où vous allez partager, quand vous ouvrez la fenêtre, il vous demande et il y a une case à cocher. Voilà, quand, donc là, quand vous préparez votre partage, vous devez avoir une case à cocher en bas, je dirais, à gauche, mais dans mes souvenirs. Ce, sur la colonne de droite. Ah, bah, c'est bon, tu l'as fait, du coup. Je suis en train de voir, c'est ça, je visualise, c'est sur la colonne de ouais, droite. Oui, c'est bien. Et maintenant, tu, vous pouvez démarrer, on va voir si on entend. Démarrer la vidéo pour voir. Théodore. Le bouton en bas, la... la... Ouais, voilà. Pouvez-vous augmenter le son À droite. À droite. À droite en bas, vous avez un bouton pour augmenter le son. Par ici, oui. Et au maximum. Et au maximum. Ouais. Vous n'entendez pas bien Non, on n'entend presque pas. Alors, euh... ça va mieux On peut essayer de la lancer, c'est ça ouais, là. Mon PC, mais je ne suis pas sûr que le son soit mieux. Oui, mais oh. si vous, à mon avis, c'est que la case n'a pas été cochée de partager le son, je pense. Au on va, on va, on va essayer de lancer la vidéo depuis euh, okay. notre, euh, okay. notre PC. Si vous pouvez arrêter votre partage, Théodora, oh, et oui, comme on a la vidéo. Excusez-moi, je suis désolée. Ah, non, je vous en prie. Et on va essayer de le partager depuis oui, la vidéo. So for partners, we try to uh, arrange the audio problems. Just wait one minute. Hello everyone, I'm Annette Belay. I'm director of the vocational training organization Le Campus des Talents. We are a French uh, professional training organization. Since 2008, we have been providing training for professionals in the health and social care sectors. The majority of our customers are of the ASIO Santé Group, a private non-profit company which manages healthcare units. We also work with a number of other French customers in the healthcare sector. The mission of Campus des Talents is to design and develop professional training programs in both face-to-face -face and distance learning modes. The aim of the project is to survey the directors of healthcare establishments about their expectation in terms of the 5.0 transition. Two sectors were selected by our partner, ASIO Santé, home care and pharmacies. The sectors were selected on the basis of their involvement in innovation and the strong impact that the healthcare crisis has had on them. The approach 
Since uh, January, we have been working in partnership with students from the Ecole des Mines in Saint Etienne as part of an entrepreneurship training program called PRICE. As part of the project, the students are carrying out a benchmark of 5.0 training courses in the health sector, gathering information on the specific needs of the pharmacy and home care sectors, and identifying the associated skills. The team's work is divided into three stages. The first stage consists of interviews with the directors of the sectors and establishments. The aim is to analyze the specific needs of each of the two sectors, collective qualitative information, and identify the main challenges of, and opportunities. In this first stage, the students also interview research and innovation players to obtain a strategic and prospective visions of needs and projects. The second stage will be based on the data collected during the interviews, which will be used to design a quantitative survey. This survey will be sent to all employees of the ISO Santé Group, as well as to external stakeholders. This survey will use the statistic collected to validate and expand on the results obtained during the first phase, while taking into account a large sample for a more representative analysis. The third phase, uh, all the information will be used to start designing the training models. This research is due to be completed in May 2024. What is our target market? Uh, our action, action is aimed directly at training organizations in the health sector, pharmacy and home care, and healthcare professionals, in particular managers of health and social care establishments. It will also have an impact on teams of healthcare professionals, as well as on patients who will benefit from better care. Reflection on courses, the process has not yet been finalized. Stage one has just been completed with the final interviews with the directors. The initial feedback gives us, give us an overview on the, of the main challenges is uh, the impact of digital technology on professional practices, the attractiveness of the professions, crisis and needs management, interprofessional coordination and collaboration. These themes are, had already been identified, so here is a more detailed description of what professionals understand by these concerns. Module 1, digital and remote management. Objective is to improve staff digital skills, including the use of telemedicine collab collaborative tools, such as the intranet and remote case management. Module two, attracting staff, building managerial capacity. Objective is to make the healthcare professions more attractive and reduce staff turnover. Model three, crisis management and resilience. Objective is to prepare staff to better manage, manage crises, crises and develop greater resilience. Module four, promoting awareness of sustainable development. The objective is to promote among employees and customers of sustainable development issue in the healthcare sector. Model five, inter interprofessional collaboration and coordination. The objective is to improve communication and coordination between diff different healthcare professionals. Model five on interprofessional collaboration and coordination seems to have an impact on several areas of the study. It may have consequences for digital technology, the attractiveness of professions, resilience, sustainable development, and so on. So we will see what expectation and opportunities emerge from the survey. We will be able to present the conclusions of the study in June. Thanks a lot. So thank you very much, uh, Theodora.
and, and uh, thank you very much to Campus de Tana and then all presenters. So Ramona, I give you the floor. Perhaps we have some time for feedback exchanges. Okay, thank you, Xavier. Thank you, Teodora. As we have seen, basically each partner, each sector has its own needs and requirements. Nevertheless, we take into account the fact that this is the first interaction, is a general perspective on what their network needs. And we plan to take a step further, which involves basically developing interviews or a Delphi study using a snowballing technique in order to get in touch with the end user of the vocational training. In this case, what we are trying to identify is the specific needs that they want to develop in order to make sure that it's going to be a fit between what they want and what we are going to deliver, the teaching materials that we are going to deliver. So the next step that we take into account is developing a Delphi study using snowballing techniques at each sector level, which means industry, agri-food, and healthcare. And starting from that and identifying a common ground, we got move forward to develop the teaching materials where we will have into account all the previous deliverables that have been developed, which means the work package three and the quality assessment and protocol from work package eight. Now, if you have further recommendations, we are happy to receive them. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ramon. And this is clarifying uh, all the, the process. Um, may I start to uh, give some some feedback also? If you, yeah. if you want, it. it's really open to uh, everybody to, to react. Uh, some reaction on the three presentation. It's why it was really quite interesting. And uh, what we see is we are at the starting of work package five, but everybody has started to really think and to uh, procreate the Codemo uh, objective. And this is really positive. Um, you uh, highlighted uh, just in your last words, uh, Ramona, uh, the next step. So the process in order to come to the full definitive certification. So as we can see with uh, Campus des Talents, for example, in France, uh, this is an experience of a, a full process to identify precise needs. And perhaps this experiment, this way to do by Campus des Talents could be also a, a, a good inspiration for a, a Fedakova and Filippo also on how to process. So it's interesting to share between you practices and uh, on, on the way to, to define the next steps. And uh, at Campus des Talents, we put some uh, student project to help all the process that you mentioned, uh, Ramona, also. Okay. My second uh, recommendation is perhaps is that we have to fully accept that in each of the country, both the process and the way to define the certification would be really adapted to uh, to the country and to the to the organ, institution vocational uh, training organisms so uh it's not uh, there is no necessity to standardize everything and to uh, uh just to share good practice and to uh, uh customize it uh, locally of course then another type of um, of remarks um concerning the content uh of what will become a certification so um in the example of campus de talent what i appreciated also in uh, the modules that were presented is that uh, finally they are like modules already uh, structured as a certification they cover the different topics uh uh, linked to uh, 5.0, including uh, human factor, resilience, uh, some green aspects, etc. So there is already uh, in the campus some notion of uh, a certification path. Uh, for uh, 
perhaps uh, the other partners, um, uh, we can see that you are already aligned with 5.0 because you looked at all the topics of 5.0. Um, however, um, uh, in the certification at least, we have to keep in mind that uh, somehow we want to develop also the culture of the 5.0. That means that there is a necessity to sensibilize, uh, perhaps a bad word, sorry, my bad English, uh, uh, to give sensibilization uh, to the actors uh, on uh, the fact that uh, 5.0 try to uh, not only put the emphasis on digitalization, but to link digitalization with the other topics. So uh, to have a, a bit more systemic view also as an introduction and sensibilization on 5.0. So perhaps that could be a point to, to think. If I may uh, interfere at this level? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The idea is that we do take into account all the aspects of Industry 5.0, and we were planning to include it when defining the learning path. Yeah. So it's going to be included. That's for sure. But we need that before to identify all the needs, the specific needs that the end user have yeah. in order to build it step by step. Exactly. Certainly my remarks are directly linked to that. So my remarks are a bit in advance <laughs> on your status. Yeah, you're perfectly right. Thank you, Ramana. Um, so this is one point, and uh, and yes, uh, another step necessary will be, uh, uh, as you mentioned just now, uh, how to build a certification with the possibility to to validate the five dot zero. That means that perhaps even in your public uh, for Fedakova, Svilupo, some of your uh, companies will will only. Uh, follow uh, some module on digitalization only, but not the full certification. That means that perhaps in what you are going to build, some of the people will follow the certification with a different part of the of the path, and other uh, actors will follow only uh, will take only some uh, modules, but without access to the certification, perhaps there is this uh, necessity also. And the last point, uh, which is a bit delicate, is that we define in the certification pass to include some innovation activity. And this is perhaps not an easy point. It depends, uh, I, I don't know. For our students, academic students, it's easier because we can, in the academic curriculum, uh, include some uh, innovation project. Perhaps for the companies, it's difficult. So we can have a, a light version, for example, uh, for the basic level of the certification uh, in case uh, any uh, actor of a company is working on innovation in its company. It could have some uh, uh, feedback on its personal experience of innovation, uh, trying to look at uh, human factors, at uh, green factors and resilience factors, uh, just as a feedback on an existing project of innovation. We have to find uh, easy solution, perhaps. Perhaps in other, in other case, they will really develop an innovation project. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, we have perhaps to keep in mind also this uh, recommendation of the certification to have some link uh, uh, to an, a concrete activity innovation inside the, the project. Perhaps, uh, I, I know that Serge is asking something, perhaps some reaction from Ramona or uh, anybody else, and then we give the floor to uh, Serge. Okay, what can I say? Thank you for the recommendations. More or less, they are in line with what we were planning to do, given the fact that we focus on identifying the needs, share practice, take into account all the elements that are related to cultural differences, and the fact that each sector is different, each country is different, they operate on different level. 
which means that they cannot use, let's say, the recipe of success on how to develop Industry 5.0. So we have that into account for sure. Regarding the certification, yes, it's a little bit delicate. It's sensitive right now, but thank you for the recommendation and we will definitely take it into account. Thank if you anyone much. else has any recommendation, we are here, happy to receive. Thank you, Ramana. So yes, Serge, you wanted to uh, make change? Uh, yes, uh, uh, th there is in France something called AFEST, Action Formation Situation Travail, uh, that might be a solution also to, uh, so it is a training at the workplace. Uh, there is something official in France for that. So maybe that would be something that could be in included. But for the certification, uh, th th there is a way where badges could help precisely, which is when people end a course, uh, they, they, they have the certificate as they ended the course, but then this uh, certificate can be upgraded to uh, has been applied at the, at the workplace. And so th that, could, that could be a, a way also to, to have a certificate, which is, okay, you attended a course, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, in, in order to, to have the full certificate, you need to, to have testimonies from your employer or from colleagues that you have applied your learning. And just yeah. one comment, another comment, there is a module called uh, Raising Awareness and uh, I think one of the problems we, we have found in many projects is a difficulty to move from awareness into action. And uh, there are ma many projects where you raise awareness about gender equality, for example, okay, and people attend this raising awareness uh, program or workshop, but then they don't know what to do. <laughs> They're aware that there is a problem, but they don't have a solution. So I think it is important uh, for the for the project, when, when we uh, raise awareness, to provide the tools that will help people to transform awareness in, in, into action, uh, and uh, OmiLab is is one of the things uh, we have at our disposal. But we sh should really have in mind the difficulty, the real difficulty, to transform awareness in, into action, and this is where the crux of the problem is, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. So these are two interesting points. Huh? Uh, the, the point to uh, really try to make the link between the certification and what is really occurring in the situation of work uh, for the people and to uh, try to, uh, to have interesting uh, connections. And yes, and perhaps for the last point, uh, how to pass from uh, awareness to action. This is linked perhaps also to uh, what was mentioned by Thomas yesterday, the different levels of uh, putting into practice and different levels of certification, which could also be connected to that uh, remark. Thank you. May I also add something for the <clears throat> action point? Um, I think it was mentioned in one of the presentations uh, now uh, from the web partners that also webinars are an important opportunity uh, considered. Uh, but then unfortunately, we do not have registrations from the web partners for the webinar. So I think one first action would be if you could register uh, for the webinar series in Kodeme, but also most importantly, share this, distribute this information throughout the web network so you can uh, have a first point of awareness on the on the VET network. What is 5.0? What is innovation? What is transformation? Um, so then the the ones involved also in these uh, vocational trainings um, get uh, have a knowledge on the on the terms on what this means. So yes. Yeah, uh, I think also this will come progressively also, uh, Julia, because we are still uh, in the six first months and uh, we are getting maturity in the content of even of the webinars progressively. Uh, one ex one uh, example uh, in the sense of Julia is that in France, for example, <clears throat> we have made a general uh, English webinar, but we are going to make one in French for the companies. Uh, and more aligned with uh, a bit their uh, expectation in terms of information. 
So we are going to, to build that with Campus Detana. And the fact that it is in French, of course, will be more open also to uh, more, uh, more actors. So it's open to everybody in Italy, France, or uh, Poland, uh, or Spain, uh, to make also webinars in your uh, own languages and uh, more dedicated. And even uh, half an hour of webinar can be a, a good opportunity. Thank you, Yuna. Okay, so uh, um, no, no more question remarks. Um, I think also perhaps uh, for uh, Campus, Filippo and uh, Pedakova, it was interesting to have that first share of, of uh, information, I think, and uh, uh, catalyzed by uh, uh, Valencia University, I think that uh, additional interaction like that will be uh, also interesting for, for you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ramona. Uh, you think we can close perhaps that uh, session? We cannot. <laughs> yeah. It's OK. So thank you for all the recommendation. Thank to all the vet partners that were involved and in giving this first step in identifying the needs and presenting the network. And from here, we just move forward with taking into account all the comments and recommendations that we receive now regarding adaptability, putting into practice and certification. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Ramana and all your team. Okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, and then uh, still not the time of a small break. So first we switch to World Package uh, 6 and it is managed, I think, by uh, Uni Bergamo. Uh, not a... So I give you the floor. I know that several people from Bergamo are by here and uh, Fabiana, perhaps, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, Luca will present. Uh... Our task. Can you hear me? Now, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. And you can see the screen, I think. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, if you okay. can just, uh, yeah, switch into that job. Yeah, program. I go. Perfect. Okay. So um, we will talk now about um, WP6 uh, based on the development of 5.0 collaborative networks. Just uh, Luca, can you change the option of um, displaying? Because what what you see? Uh, to yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, because I'm connected to I don't know. Uh, yes good thank you very much this is fine yeah. Uh, we cannot hear you currently. Oh. Ah. And we have lost uh, everybody. Uh. Can you hear us? Yes. And now what you have, uh, what you are seeing? Is, it is very good now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, <laughs> Alexandra. So sorry for the problems. <laughs> um, okay. So we will talk about WP6 based on the development of 5.6 collaborative networks. Just an overview of the main objective of WP6. Um, 
one of the main objectives is managing the definition and deployment of value for creation boosters. And oh, sorry, I have to, okay. Booster activities, the organization of uh, the 5.0 innovation event and the creation of uh, the case studies and the success stories. We want to uh, start with uh, um, describing a bit task 6.1, which is based on the activity plan uh, for value co-creation boosters, because we think it's important to um, describe the structure that we want to give uh, to the activity plan of uh, booster activities um, in order to align with task 6.2, which is the deployment of these activities. So how task 6.1 is structured? Um, it's mainly structured on four points. Uh, Transsectoral promotion activities shared by all boosters, the definition and the publication of learning services and collaborative projects, and the identification of more specific uh, sectorial added value for each national booster. So here the objective is for each point of this uh, structure, defining uh, the points that we want to fill out with our proposal in order to understand and detail the activity plan better and um, to facilitate the deployment of the activities and the proposal of the activities from the partners. So for the point A, um, we think that we need to define at first, of course, the objectives. One, for example, can be a large network and how they are structured, these uh, promotional activities. We have here some example from uh, University of Sibiu. Uh, for example, we can do meetings with organization, organization visits, workshop conferences, master thesis, PhD thesis. These are just examples. Um, then we will, in the few weeks and months, coordinate with MC to uh, detail this plan, enlarge this, this point, and maybe add new ones. For the point B, so regarding learning services, the input of this uh, subtask is mainly from, from VP5. Um, and here for learning services, we need to detail uh, the topic to be addressed, the training needs to be filled, skill and competencies to be addressed, the target and the sector. Um, you will see this structure also for the point C, so for collaborative projects. The idea here is to define the main points to be addressed. So if we can give the partner a detailed activity plan, a detailed structure, it's, uh, it's of course easier than to develop learning services and collaborative projects and make them effective to the objectives of uh, Codemo projects. So for collaborative projects, here you can see just a quick definition of what they are. Um, so we have a lot of definition in this project. So we think, we thought that it was um, effective to put here just a quick definition. So um, for collaborative projects, we need to detail, as I said before, topics, partners involved, sectors, targets, and we need to focus also on the pillars of Industry 5.0 because me, sometimes we think a lot about digitalization, but we put uh, apart maybe sustainability, human centricity and resilience. So we need to keep the focus on the main pillars of Industry 5.0. And then for um, the identification of more specific sectorial added value, we think this is implicit in, in point B and C, so learning the, with the definition of learning services and collaborative projects. Uh, but of course, they will be underlined and detailed if uh, it's, it will be considered re relevant to, to, to make them clear to the partners. Um, so this is just a, a draft. This is just on our proposal of the um, structure of the activity plan. Uh, since we have coordinated, we, we have talked with the University of Sibiu and with MC, we think an alignment on this on task 6.1 and task 6.2 is essential to make effective uh, work. And um, so now I don't know if MC have some consideration on this. Um, you're free to tell us. 
and um, in the in next weeks, months, we will, of course, detail with the collaboration of MC and the coordination of CBU this, uh, this structure. If we don't have considerations or uh, comments, I think we can go with the uh, uh, University of Sibiu, which will present us some insights on their innovation event, webinars, reporting system for uh, task uh, 6.2, and, uh, and so on. So, Thank you, Luca. Just open the sharing, please. Yes, just a moment. Okay. Okay, uh, just just a little bit because I didn't do what I wanted. Okay, uh, I don't. Uh, Re uh, reiterate uh, all that Luca said, but uh, of course the deployment of booster activities uh, should follow the action plans that is defined in the 6.1 uh, task. So uh, I go directly to the to the main. Uh, activity that uh, I want to, let's say, aware a little bit all partners about it. Uh, we prepared also a few of the um, few of the activities and also a learning, uh, not necessarily learning curricula, but some uh, activities that we can uh, uh, offer for the companies and others. But of course, this should be let's say, uh, adapt to the specific of each partner, the specific of each uh, area, and uh, some are more industrialized, some are uh, based on uh, agriculture or health. Okay, uh, regarding the innovation webinars, I uh, prepare a little bit, uh, let's say, a table, an Excel file. It's uh, uploaded uh, in the VP6 uh, folder. And uh, I completed with what I know until now. Actually, we have uh, the first or the kickoff webinar developed together with uh, Minde Saint Etienne, Omilab, uh, Marquard, Devoluma, ACO, and Fedakova. That happened in the uh, end of February. Next week, uh, from one week from now, we will uh, share some examples of uh, Omilab educational utilization at uh, our university. There are some projects that we, let's say, already done uh, during the installing of the Omilab laboratory. And uh, together with a team formed by my colleague Daniel Morariu and other uh, PhD or master student, we will show six examples that uh, everybody could share. That examples are related with a specific pilot project or uh, study cases from industry or from uh, agriculture. And our proposal is uh, also uh, based on, on what I saw in the previous form of the Excel file. I saw that there is an intention from uh, uh, Minde Saint Etienne and ISO to develop uh, a, a webinar somehow in the period July till uh, September regarding, as I understood, on health topic, uh, but uh, you need to confirm that is true or not. Also, Unibial is prepared for October, uh, September to have such a webinar. And uh, I completed here because we need to have uh, around 15, at least, at least 15, it's better to have more webinars. I introduce here with estimation of time, not necessary to be right in that month, but uh, in the six or the 12 webinar to have uh, from ULBS and other webinars regarding uh, modernizing agriculture practices using AI, robotics, IoT, 
and also uh, some example uh, about aerial crop monitoring system and precision application. And also another uh, another webinar uh, realized by my colleague uh, Remus Brad and Ilya Beriliu about machine vision for uh, manufacturing industry application. That, let's say, are uh, definitely set. And I invite every partner to think a little bit and to fill these uh, Excel files. And uh, let's say uh, to have uh, at least in one month, uh, the all webinars until October set. And then uh, also the rest of the webinars is better to have uh, until, uh, let's say, the next uh, semestrial meeting. So this is please uh, um, homework for everybody. And also, uh, I agree if you have also some other, uh, let's say, uh, improvement of this table or other things that we need to share. And uh, just few things uh, regarding uh, uh, the rest of the activities or what we intend to to do, in my opinion, uh, regarding uh, Innovation Days event that we we already started implementation and also I saw at the Uni Bergamo that is also in the development. Uh, my opinion is that such events, because need to be visible, should have some section like uh, the schedule, the speakers, or the also the opportunity to. Uh, record the live session, preparation, presentation, or also calls for projects or even blogs. And uh, based on this, in our case, we organize in four section uh, as panel, like a conference where we have a guest from uh, most of the partners of uh, Codemo and also uh, from companies around CBU and not only from two IT clusters, from uh, CBO IT cluster and uh, Cluj IT cluster, but also from other uh, academic partners from Europe. And uh, beside this, we organized together with uh, Marquard and uh, Omilab a workshop dedicated uh, through Codemo. And uh, as Julia said, we will present some results based on our uh, already in progress activity. But we have also uh, another workshop for blockchain uh, education for students and not only. We organize also a hackathon uh, trying to attract the young generation to develop innovative solution on different, uh, let's say, topics, but around the uh, innovation uh, events in our case, and also poster for uh, about innovative projects from students or professor from ULBS. In our case, uh, the topics uh, in this year or the main idea is uh, regarding the emerging technologies and the drivers for digital transformation in business and education. And we include the six uh, panels in, we consider very important, green digital transition, also quantum computing and quantum information, because as I see in the Europe is a topic that try to, to uh, develop very well in the West of Europe, but in Romania is uh, not so uh, uh, developed. AI, because uh, all we know, and I saw that uh, Jose, Juan Jose Rico said about ChatGPT, uh, learning to use ChatGPT, that we need also such a topic. Of course, innovative partnership where we want to disseminate because it's better to disseminate different projects that we have, not only us, but also partners of us. And of course, education, because uh, we are focused on education of young generation and upskilling or reskilling and the lifelong learning process. And blockchain and cybersecurity, also a very important topic. The format I expressed before, and just creating, let's say, a link to the rest of the discussion, Julia mentioned that uh, in 23 of May, we will have a first uh, design thinking uh, workshop together with Mark Ward and Omilab about 
two ideas or at least one in May and the second in uh, October, depend on the partners, regarding sample flashing, programming and flashing of sample pieces and object detection, image recognition uh, within system test. And of course, we need to prepare in the in continuous also at least a case study about agriculture and probably another the fourth or fifth case study in industry, industry or agriculture. I don't know yet, but uh, we will need to do this. So thank you very much. This was my short presentation. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Adrian. If... Just if I can just interrupt just one minute, Luca. Yes. Concerning uh, webinars. So uh, thank you, Adrian, to underline the, the necessity of involvement of all partners in developing webinars. Uh, generally, when we develop a webinar, uh, we work in collaboration, the universities with the other partners to bring different points of view. Uh, so uh, I would catalyze also the university to uh, to become good catalyzers of webinar organizations. Uh, if we uh, organize each university uh, two or three webinars uh, on the three years of the project, each of us, this will come to uh, nearly 18 webinars, so more than what we need. So. Uh, just keep in mind that and uh, try to be catalyzers of the collaboration with the other partners to uh, to be on all that. I think it's quite quite uh, easy. And concerning innovation days, yes, you mentioned the very good and nice organization that you and uh, you have in uh, CBU, uh, Adrian. So <clears throat> uh, in the project Codemo itself, uh, we have three innovation events uh, and the first one is in um, in Bergamo so this year for the first one we uh, uh, decided a, a lighter version because concerning Codemo we were not ready to uh, have a full attractivity for a, a lot of partner as your experience in Sibiu so this is the reason one but for the two next one uh, innovation days, it should be much more open, as you mentioned, with more activities and more external actors participating to um, the day, the innovation events, including uh, the price, because we in the two next uh, editions, we will organize the international price on these days. And I remind you that um, after the Codemo edition, the next one will be in CBU, so certainly linked to in CBU innovation, uh, I can imagine. And the last one will be in France, just to mention that. Thank you very much. Thank you also, Xavier, that you uh, emphasize these things. Of course, uh, uh, as you said, it's very important the connection with uh, uh, co business partners, in our opinion. And uh, of course, in case everybody needs or wants some just to discuss, not advices or uh, other things, uh, I can express my our view, actually, not only mine, and uh, should be adapted on the every partner because uh, there are different uh, collaboration, there are different type of partners. So it's not uh, necessary to replicate exactly what happened in one place to another but use the good practices, in my opinion. Thank you, uh, Adrian. We give you back the floor, Luca. OK. So I just share my screen if everything will go good. So I think. Is this one okay? You can't see my screen, I think. Yes. <clears throat> Is good. 
Mari berapa kejadian? Sorry, but I have problems today with them. Okay. The screen. Okay. Okay, so now I think everything is fine. Yes, it is fine now. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the problems again. Uh, just I want just to underline the point for task 6.1 and task 6.2. Maybe if we can arrange a meeting, an online meeting between us, uh, uh, MC and the ULBS, maybe we'll be fine to align on uh, the proceeding of these two tasks and the uh, alignment of them. Uh, maybe we will see in the future for, uh, via email if we can uh, arrange an online meeting within us. I don't know if it's okay for you because I... Yes, sir. Okay. We think we are losing a bit of alignment, so it, it will be good to just a quick meeting to to summarize the, the main points we want to touch. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about the first innovation day. Uh, we changed some things we discussed with Omilab and Dempsey about it. Uh, the date will be the same, so the 20th and 21st of June. The location will be we don't know if doing it in Bergamo or in Dalmine, we will see based also on your comfort and reaching the location, of course. And um, But we we have to see the availability of uh, the, the place. Uh, for the 20th of June, uh, the schedule is the same. In the afternoon, we will have an internal meeting between, uh, between the project partners. Um, we think it's a very important point because we can uh, align better uh, in a face-to-face -face meeting, so we can uh, make some criticalities and uh, and problems and solve them. We um, put here 1.5 hours of dedicated meeting for VP4, as MC requested, and then we will have an alignment on project activities. The main changes will be on 21st of June. We will, we will start with a recap of World Package 1 results, if we can, uh, maybe just 20, 30 minutes, just to um, summarize the main points and start uh, with the brainstorming session. Here, we have an, we have an idea, but uh, we have to see the participants that will be at the first innovation day, because our idea was to divide in two groups. One focusing on skills and the development of the certifications. We will define later the main themes we want to touch with the brainstorming and uh, detailing the, the brainstorming activities. And the other one was to integrate effectively the learning cube in the Codemoy platform. So maybe defining uh, how can we pass from a, one level from another and, uh, and so on. But uh, of course, if, uh, for example, no one from Bfield will be there, I think, it's a problem to, to make a brainstorming of, uh, on, on this team. So uh, we will provide you a doodle in the next few weeks to understand your availability. And uh, based on this, we can, uh, we can better uh, structure the, the, morning, the, the teams of the brainstorming. We will do, of course, a brainstorming session. We think it's very uh, useful to develop some contents but uh, we need to understand who will be there to better uh, structure the, the activities. And then in the afternoon... Uh, uh, Luca, maybe I can yes. briefly interrupt you. Yes, yes. This is Thomas from Bielefeld. Um, I already mentioned that I'm unfortunately... That it's hard for Bielefeld to be available. Um, but... There was the 20th of June, and you suggested to do a hybrid meeting. Maybe this uh, is also possible for the 21st, because I think a discussion about how to integrate Learning Cube into the e-platform, I think we can also do it as a as a hybrid meeting from my perspective. I think that might be possible, I, if I understand it correctly, what you're planning here, yes, so, so that we could participate as well. Okay, so we will uh, we will ask you maybe in the doodle who will be uh, online and who will be in presence, so we can better understand. With I personally think that we can do an hybrid meeting. I don't know if 
uh, if we should have some problems, maybe with the connection or with the organization of brainstorming activities, we will discuss this internally and then we can mm -hmm. get back to you. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we, we need to understand if it's possible and, and everything, but it's a good idea. So thank you very much for, uh, yeah. for, the, for the proposal. So uh, regarding the afternoon on the 21st of June, we changed a bit, uh, talking with Omidab. Uh, Omidab suggested us to involve more people uh, in uh, the afternoon. So we wanted to involve masters and PhD students with the presentation of projects and theses with teams related, of course, to the Codemo project teams, resilience, sustainability, and human centricity. Uh, about this later, I will present some, uh, some details. Um, and then um, we will have some presentation of testimonials from startups, companies, boosters, mainly will be from the healthcare and uh, manufacturing sectors. Uh, Bergamo Sviluppo is helping us a lot in finding these uh, useful testimonials. And we think we will be very useful for the partners and for the purpose of the projects because they can present uh, an application of industry 5.0 teams and, uh, and knowledge. So we think it will be very nice to have it, to have them to present. Regarding the uh, presentation of masters and PhD students, we already have maybe some projects from master students from Bergamo. So we developed a call for projects. It's just a draft. Uh, you can find it here. Maybe later you can have a look and then tell us if it's good, if you want to change something. And of course, the definition of the innovation days is still a draft. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to, to write us. Um, and the objective, of course, for the for task 623 is the, defi the, the definition of the, the activities and the implementation of the key points of the innovation day. Regarding task 6.4, so the development of the case studies, um, UNIBG is responsible for coordinating the publication on the Codemo e platform and collecting the case studies from the manufacturing area, EMSE from the healthcare and UPV from the agriculture. We want to encourage you to do, to start to think to case studies. We developed some templates, uh, the ones from industry, uh, in reality, in, we have three templates, one for industry sector, one for agri-food, and one for healthcare. They are already uploaded in Codemo uh, Partage. You can find the link, the, the direct link here. Um, we um, have just to wait to have some insights on the template of, from, for the healthcare sector from MC. Uh, they have more expertise in, on, uh, on this team so they can provide us some uh, useful insights to better uh, structure the case study. And uh, maybe uh, if the, all the partners, if I can take a look to the case study, they can provide us uh, some uh, suggestions. Uh, as you can see from here, the, 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 the structure is well, under, well, well um, defined. And I think that the main point to the case study is to address the three main points of Industry 5.0. So remember, resilience, sustainability, and human centricity need to be discussed. It's very important also in webinars and, uh, and also in case studies. Um, so just, I know that the development of case studies is uh, a bit uh, a few months later, but uh, our suggestion is just to start thinking about the case study, start reading these templates. If you have any any modification to, to, that we want to do, uh, just tell us and uh, start to think how to address the main points of Industry 5.0. And then we have task 6.5, the quality assessment of the work package. Uh, it's very simple. They evaluate, we will evaluate boosters' activities based on the completion of the content in month 25 from, from month 25 to month 20, uh, 28. And then we have the evaluation of the work package, which we will carry out as UNIBG in month 20 and in month 36. 
just uh, some remarks. So we will have uh, uh, a meetings regarding VP6, uh, two in June, one in the first week of June. If possible, we have to organize it based on the availability of the partners. And um, uh, we will, of course, discuss about VP6 on the Innovation Day. Uh, we will have then other internal meet and other meetings, but we will define them later because it's too early to, to understand uh, if we will be there or not. So we have finished. Um, if you have some suggestions, some comments, feel free to... Okay. Uh, uh, first, uh, small question, just Luca, for uh, precision. You mentioned a call for project linked to the innovation events. I think you mean uh, you want to call to the different universities to uh, capture if they have any master PhD project to be presented during the innovation event? Is is it the right uh, understanding or? Um, the main objective here is to, yes, if we can uh, gather students from other university, I think will be good. Uh, so that's why we, we, we developed this call for projects. Uh, but we don't know how many proposals, proposals we will have. So especially from students from is it a call for a uh, for project presentation? Presentation, yes, yes, yes. Presentation, just five, 10 minutes presentation of, uh, um, I can just uh, tell you an example. Um, we have a course here, service engineering. They, the students will develop a project and uh, it, will, it can be related to maybe resilience or sustainability, teams of, of Industry 5.0. And, um, and so they can present their projects and uh, how they apply uh the knowledge they developed uh, related to, to the codemo teams is just an application of uh, of industry 5.0 and an engagement of uh, external people uh, on on the project okay good yeah I, I think when we had a meeting with uh, with bergamo um we discussed this point and the idea was for the for the students from the course that luca just mentioned um to i mean they are in bergamo so they can come and present this um, to the um, to the industry partners, and then uh, from the other partners, if we can attract students, um, they should present them online. Because I don't think we can support all the students to come there in Bergamo for for now. But um, uh, throughout our courses, um, if we can share this call and uh, for five minutes online presentations, perhaps some students are are interested. Yes, thank you, Julia. Yes, this online uh, point is uh, is important, I think, for the innovation event. So if you can do it, it's, uh, it's better. And just Luca, yes, I think that concerning the case study template, uh, yes, we should take the time a bit to uh, uh, to have a look at it and uh, perhaps to uh, still uh, still you know, improve some some elements if uh, if required. I have just a question regarding the length of the case study. Uh, two pages, three pages, how? Because I asked based on our previous experience, just to know. Well, the, our, our previous experience was not perhaps exactly the same. Um, what we want to, uh, to do is really to create a bank of case studies. That means that uh, to give enough interesting information for uh, people, uh, uh, external people accessing to that knowledge. So uh, in my opinion, um, uh, a vision of two pages of description is too synthetic because you don't have enough information to uh, capture something interesting if you are an external actor, it's just too, too superficial. So. Uh, uh, I would like, yes, with Bergamo to keep in mind that objective, that it is some kind of knowledge-oriented uh, process uh, to give uh, access to uh, 
interesting element of information and of practices to external actors of the consortium. So yeah, perhaps a bit more that's what we have done uh, in previous uh, projects. Uh, probably not more than six pages or something like this, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sh I think you're all right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ryan. Um, Luca, we give you back the floor. If there is no other questions. Okay, uh, Luca, we cannot hear you. Oh, so, sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, I don't know. The, the, do you want me to present for VP8 now, or we will have a break? I... No, no, no. Uh, just to close the session, if it's right for you. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, yes. For from my point of view, it's fine. I don't know if Fabiana wants to add something. Uh, from my point of view, it's it's fine. Thank no, you, no, everyone, fine. for your help. No, no, it's fine. Thank you. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, I I suggest that we respect the agenda. So we take uh, 10 minutes of break if, if you if you want. And uh, we see uh, again each other within uh, 10 minutes. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Have a good coffee and uh, see you in a few minutes.
<laughs> so um, hi everybody nice again to uh, meet you <clears throat> and just to be sure you can just yes, put your video on to uh, watch things and Luca, without starting in case you have to share something on the screen you can prepare it Yes, thank you. Just a moment. Let's get a move. Video switch. Okay. But we still wait one minute. Okay. I wait a few minutes. Oh, yes, just one, one or two minutes, I will. Okay, okay, okay. So yes, before uh, the work package for kickoff, we wanted just to highlight some uh, quality management uh, issues and, and uh, templates. So with, uh, with Bergamo and the university also. So yes, please, Luca, you can take the floor. Okay, thank you. So just a um, brief overview of OP8. We developed a few templates. You should have received an email from Raxmi a few months before, I think, where uh, he reported the main templates we have produced and uh, how to use them. Uh, but I want to focus on this template because the evaluation of the deliverables will be done by internal reviewers that we defined in the quality assurance plan and you can find it here. So each partner, each part partner has a review to do for a deliverable. Don't worry because the template is uh, simple and uh, when it's time to do the review, we will inform you, giving you the material needed and the main information to do the review correctly. It's important that the, 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 the deliverable uh, will be completed uh, seven, 10 days before the deadline in order to ensure that the quality assessment will be done in time. And the, the decision to uh, assign an internal reviewer and not doing all the review as UniBG is because you can have a more uh, specific uh, uh, knowledge of the deliverable produced since you are involved in this uh, in this creation of the deliverable. So uh, just take a look at the templates and uh, in particular at this template, the quality assurance checklist for evaluation of the deliverable. This is the template you will use for the evaluation of, uh, of the various deliverable. And if you have any question, just ask, but don't worry that when it's time to do the quality assessment of a deliverable, we will inform you in time, giving you all the information needed. We have, have already done the quality assessment of some deliverables. Now I don't remember one. Deliverable one and deliverable 8.2 and another one done by Billfield and we didn't have problems. So it's it's easy, it's nothing difficult. That's, that's all for Ruby 8. I don't wanna go too much in detail and bother you with templates. I just want to give a, you a, an insight on, on this process of reviewing of deliverables. Thank you very much, uh, Luca. In case of any question, it's still possible. And then we can switch to work package four, which is quite important also together with vocational training. It is dedicated to uh, the academic certification. So uh, of course, the six universities are very involved in these uh, deployments and uh, we have already some uh, advances to be presented by uh, Nathalie Douar in Mines Saint Etienne together with uh, Nadine Dubruck uh, also. I give you the floor. 
Okay, thank you, Xavier, and hello to uh, everyone. Um, I will present you so the kickoff meeting of Work Package 4. We have prepared this presentation together with uh, Nadine Dubruc and Elisette Ngomar, who is uh, just uh, uh, in, in the room with me uh, this morning. Elisette is an intern. Uh, she is here since uh, two weeks and she will be with us during the six next months to help us to start this uh, work package for. So here is the timeline of this meeting. So I will briefly introduce you our vision and the objective for WP4 before making a focus on the two first tasks where we will present you some uh, experimentations that are currently in progress at Min saint etienne um, And then at the end of the meeting, we will present you a process to guide you in the uh, academic deployment. And of course, uh, your feedback, your comment and advice uh, all along the meeting are, are, are welcome. So, um, to begin, I just would like to share with you this um, schematic vision of uh, UP4. So at the core of this work package, we can find the infrastructure and the certification that are developed in work package two and three. And the goal now for us is to exploit, to use and to enrich this infrastructure to deploy the certification in our universities. And the deployment of uh, this uh, certification will be carried out on existing curricula that already exist in our universities. It could be, for instance, bachelor program, master program, or PhD program. And uh, we have a target during the project, which is to uh, reach uh, 11 academic certification paths uh, developed in these existing curricula. Um, the goal at the end is to train uh, and certify a minimum of 300 academic students uh, in each of our universities. So to figure out uh, the, this amount, it represents approximately 25 to 30 students per university and per year over two years, knowing that the certification process will start in next September. And this certification process will also serve as an opportunity to introduce new teaching modules, uh, new educational materials that could be shared and that will be shared through the infrastructure, through the e-platform Codemo. Um, I mean by new teaching module, it can be obviously um, totally new teaching module, or it could be also existing, already existing teaching modules that we can adapt in order to uh, make him them available on the platform for the other uh, partner of the consortium. Um, and uh, together with uh, this teaching module in the infrastructure and the certification deployed in the different university, all that will constitute uh, what is called in the project a catalyzer. So we have to reach uh, the uh, amount of six catalyzer uh, during the project in our six universities. Um, additionally, in order to, to create some stimulation activity among our students and to create emulation in innovative projects, we have also the duty to create one international prize this international prize will be organized twice during the project in year two and one in year two and one in year three during the innovation events as precise previously by Xavier. And we think that this international prize could be based on national awards that are organized locally. So basically, oh, sorry. I have to move something on my screen. Okay. Uh, so basically here are the different K objective of uh, WP4. Uh, so first we have to define the national academic certification path that will be 
uh, offered in each country. And this certification pass should cover the three learning dimension, which is which are green, resilient, and human-centered. We'll, we will have also to manage the deployment of educational materials and teaching methodologies through the student catalyzers. We have also the duty to create the Codemo Student Innovation Prize and to ensure the delivery of the certification to, to different uh, academic students and obviously to apply quality improvement procedure to these teachings. So how is organized this uh, UP4? It is organized in five main tasks. Um, currently, we are working on the two first one that officially starts uh, this month, which are the first one is to organize and to implement the student innovation catalyzers, namely to define the different academic curricula in each universities. And the second first, task is uh, dedicated to the Student Innovation Prize, and we are leader of these two first tasks. Um, then by October, we'll start two new tasks, uh, because in October, we should be ready to, de to start the deployment of the certification in bachelor and master program and in PhD program. And later on, we will have to ensure the quality assessment and, and feedback. And uh, this task will be uh, led by Bergamo. So our first milestone is quite soon, is in September, where we should have all the catalyzer ready to use. Uh, it means, as I said before, that the different academic uh, certification paths should be uh, quite well defined for this uh, for this date in order to be able to start the deployment of the certification by October. Okay, so this was a brief uh, introduction for the the key objective and timeline of work package four, and now we would like to move on, a uh, focus on task four point one. Um, so first of all, the task 4.1 so is dedicated to student innovation catalyzer deployment. Uh, you have the description of the task in the middle of the screen. And for to do so, we will need some input from work package two and three. Namely, uh, we will work closely, we will interact closely with the infrastructure and the Codemo e-platform developing work package too, that would be useful to share teaching content, teaching module, and to, to certify the students. We will uh, work also closely uh, according to the recommendation of work package three, uh, namely the learning queue that is developed and how the open batch certification is organized. And um, these two first milestone coming from our package two and three should be um, reached by uh, this summer and will help us to deploy the student catalyzer. So our inputs in work package four are, uh, the first one is by September 24, when uh, the six catalyzer should be ready and as soon as this catalyzer will be ready, we will be able to start the uh, academic certification deployment in order to train and certify at least 150 academic students uh, before September 25. So it's uh, uh, the, our second milestone, which is to reach half of the uh, final targets of uh, academic certification. Okay, so we, even if the task officially starts now, we are working on uh, since the beginning of the project and we have some, we had some internal meeting at uh, Mille Saint Etienne to work on uh, the academic certification path. And we ask ourselves how this academic certification pass could cover 
all 5.0 dimensions. And we have worked also on the innovation learning activity because uh, I recall here, here's um, uh, one figure of the project, which is uh, the organization of, uh, of the training, a kind of, um, not organization, but a, this is an overview of the content. The structure. Yes, yeah, the structure, thank you. The structure of, uh, of the academic certification for, for the student, which is based on the obviously the the four dimension digital environmentally friendly resilience and human factor which are the main bricks uh, where the student should be trained uh, but in order to 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 um, increase competencies of the students uh, they must uh, work on as well on an innovation learning activity in order for them to be um, to be uh, aware and to challenge the 5.0 dimensions. And something that appear important to us uh, regarding this uh, organization is that uh, we think that it's important that the students should be uh, sensibilized to the fact that such organization, such different dimensions should be approached in a systemic way. Um, it means that uh, we do not take into account all these dimensions independently to each other, but we should be aware that all these dimensions should be taking uh, in a, should be the, the student should be aware uh, of a global overview of all these dimensions. And with the idea that um, a project should cover all these should uh, ideally cover all these dimensions, both at the level of the project object, I mean the service or the product that is uh, at the end, at the the objective of the project, as well as the level of the management of the project, the deciders, the the, the, the student who will be a uh, future uh, co-creative, uh, uh, future um, decider, uh, manager should manage this project through also the concept of 5.0. Okay, so uh, regarding that, um, based on that, we, we, we have already think about the different academic certification paths that could be uh, created at Mines Saint-Étienne. And actually, we envision to work in three different uh, academic curricula. The first one is our Master in Science and Executive Engineering, which is our main diploma at Mines Saint-Étienne. We have another diploma here, uh, which which is which is a joint master in science and management. So basically, it is the first diploma supplemented by a high training in in management, which is called fusion. And we envision as well to work with PhD program. For the moment, we have only mainly work on the first uh, academic curricula, the master in science and executive engineering. And I would like today to share with you our methodology to identify uh, what could be the future academic certification path in this curriculum. So in this way, through um, sharing our methodology, I would like to, to share with you how we, we process in order perhaps to inspire you if needed in your different uh, universities. So this master in science and executive, executive engineering is a, is a diploma that our students obtain after three years of study. So the first year, which is uh, the level uh, L3, is mainly uh, composed of core curriculum with some internship and project. During the second year, uh, students also still have some core curriculum, some basic knowledge on uh, different uh, different science and, and executive engineering. And then at the end of this second year, they start some specialization in different 
field. It could be healthcare, it could be um, industry, and so on. And they also have to uh, manage different type of projects uh, during uh, this second semester of year two. Then year three is still dedicated to specialized curriculum before leaving into uh, a bigger internship uh, just before the their leaving of the school. And so we have a look, a deeper look to this three academic year in order to um, pick up the different bricks that could be useful to define the academic certification path. And actually, we imagine, we can imagine that in the core curriculum, we can find different types of lectures that are dedicated to digital, to sustainability, to resilience, and to human factors. These courses are independently from each other, are independent from each other, but they can uh, give to the students the basics on the 5.0 dimensions. Additionally, we have the opportunity to, to train the students uh, at, the, at the end of year two uh, through the project, which is an innovation project of five months. Uh, during this project, the students are, are trained uh, during for 25 hours by coaching, master classes. They can follow as well seminar on industry, on entrepreneurship and innovation. And they have to choose a project and they work by team during 100 hour, 1 and 10 hundred hours. Uh, so this innovation project is, on, in our opinion, a good way, a good support for the innovation learning activity. And as you will see later on, also, it's a good support for the, we think it's a good support for the innovation prize as well. Um, knowing that, we, we can see that we can give the students the basics on the 5.0 dimension together with the uh, good support for the practices, the innovation learning activity. But what is, in our opinion, lacking here is a kind of uh, sensibilization to the concept of 5.0. That is why we propose to, to use a, a special part of the program dedicated to a workshop at the end of year two where we will propose to create uh, a, a module dedicated to train them and to sensibilize them to the concept of 5.0 in order to achieve this uh, sensibilization to the systemic approach that is needed for, for the student to be really trained on, on, on the topic of the project, of the Codemo project. So by equivalences, we can imagine that the core curriculum, our core curriculum could train the student with the basics of 5.0 dimension, that this uh, innovation project that is in the curriculum, uh, regular curriculum of the student could be uh, a, a good support for the innovation learning activity and for the, the price. And we propose to, to add a new, um, a new module that could be uh, uh, more focused on 5.0 organization. And this new module will, uh, um, during this um, creation of new module, we, we will produce some new resources that could be made available on the platform. Um, so, what are the next steps? So um, we would like to pursue this, the experimentation locally with, uh, with our students because we, we have approximately 10 students that uh, agreed to be volunteer in, in the experiment. We need also to refine the content configuration according to the, to the learning cube. And we propose to, to give you an intermediate feedback during the first innovation days in, in Bergamo. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our experimentation, but obviously uh, 
we will have to work also on the other academic certification paths that will be deployed in your universities. And uh, that is why we, in order to, 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 to work in an homogeneous way and to, to apply a quality process, we would like to, uh, to be aligned all together. That is why we will propose you at the end of, of the meeting, a way to gather your academic opportunities to discuss with you how there can be a support for certification. With the aim that by June 24, we could be able to have identify the E11 academic paths where to deploy the, the certification. Okay, so perhaps I, I can, we can take some time, a few minutes to, to discuss, to, to gather your comments, remark or, or advice uh, before uh, moving to uh, the task, uh, the task 4.2 dedicated to more precisely to the price. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Nathalie. It was a very, very clear, uh, a very good example how to uh, try to uh, integrate a certification pass on existing curriculum. And uh, uh, as you mentioned, what you are proposing is to send after this meeting, different meeting, uh, uh, so process for the universities to work on identifying their uh, internal parties with the objective to have a, a first very good and clear vision in next uh, June, which is quite uh, <laughs> uh, quick. Yes, yeah, it's short, it's short <laughs> but, uh, in time. It's short in time, but uh, it's a good, um, good dynamics because it is part of the objective of the project. So please feel free to uh, to react and to have any question on the, the way uh, we address it here at uh, Nisantiti. Just an additional comment um, at the end of the of the meeting. Yes, the, the last part of the meeting, we will propose you a process to 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 uh -huh. to gather your your academic opportunities and Elisette will uh, propose you how uh, we can proceed all together for that and uh, your your remark will be welcome as well. And just perhaps some additional comments we already have identified some opportunities that can exist in the consortium. I, I think about uh, uh, ULBS in, uh, in, uh, in CBU. There is uh, the CBU Innovation Days with uh, a hackathon that is organized for students. And uh, I propose to, to Adrian to think about the, the way how this hackathon could be uh, uh, a good support for this innovation learning activity. And, uh, and we, we will work on that uh, with uh, Adrian and his team to, to think about that. So thank you very much, yeah. Natalie. As you know, we make a short exchange of emails and discuss a few things. And we have some, some in our, uh, let's say, plan uh, regarding how to motivate or how important points to task. Uh, I agree also with what you presented now, but I don't know if all could be fitted in our case based on such long term, let's say. And uh, But uh, we, we will consider all, all proposal and uh, we'll do. Yeah, thank you. And I think, Adrian, you have another experience because you mentioned that you... You propose to certify uh, a first pool of students linked to a master program, I think, uh, at ULBS. Yeah, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, and as uh, also mentioned here, is uh, we propose to have, let's say, a pool of activities 
where the students are involved, not only a, only a participate to a teaching class. And uh, we need to think uh, based on our master program that we have and also to our PhD student. Thank you. So, is it clear for all universities? No, no question for the moment. Yes, more or less, more than us. Okay, good. So I think we can carry on. Yes, I leave the floor to Elisette, who will present you. So. Uh, so, Elisette, she will present you um, the task uh, 4.2. So, hello everyone, I'm Elisette and I am the intern in charge of the task 4.2. So, um, let's review a, a little summary. So, initially I will introduce you the task, describing it and uh, its objectives. Next, we will outline a comprehensive timeline, emphasizing uh, some milestone of this task. Uh, then I will introduce our benchmark achievement, and we will also delve into the insights of our little experiment. And to conclude, we will see a, um, a proposal process. So let's start. So as a part of the word package four, uh, the task uh, um, 4.2 plans to establish an international award. So this award aims to recognize the contribution of the students of the six European partners in the field of 5.0 organizations. So we will have to uh, define all the modalities to organize and deliver this award at national and international levels. So here are the things that we'll, we'll have to define, some aspects. So uh, we'll have to define the targeted students, the work requested, uh, the method of assessment, the assessment criteria, criteria sorry, uh, the deadline granted, and overall the articulation between the national and international awards. Now let's take a look to the schedule. So um, this schedule provides an overview of the key stages of this task. So we are currently in the research and synthesis phase uh, with our primary focus on conducting a benchmark analysis of uh, existing awards. So um, this process is really to provide a valuable uh, insight into the structure of the existing prize, then allowing us to create our own um, international prize. But we will see that in detail later on. The next phase is the development um, of the prize. And for this stage, we'll require your assistance. Uh, we want to hear your ideas on uh, how to organize this international prize. And to do so, we will su we'll suggest to conduct a survey and then interviews to uh, be able to gather your insights. So, but again, this we will discuss uh, it later on. So to your right, you can see some uh, key dates for the six uh, next months. So for the um, 15th of April, I will be sending the survey that I talked about. Um, you will have 15 days to complete it from the 15th to the 13th. Um, in May, we uh, plan to do the interviews. Then uh, for the 22nd of May, uh, there will be our little experiment, the, the date of our experiment. Then um, the 20th 
the 20th and the 21st June, the first Innovation Day in Bergamo. And by the end of August, which will also be the end of my internship, we uh, will have the first version of uh, the organization tools for the prize. So uh, the objective here will be that by October, uh, that the uh, catalyzer um, will have to define the opportunities for national awards that fit the modalities of the international award, that the modality that will be uh, defined by the end of August. So, um, as uh, previously mentioned, uh, we are currently in our research phase, employing a benchmarking as um, our methodical approach. So what we want to do here is really to, like I said, uh, gain insights into the structure and criteria of potential prices by anal analyzing um, existing awards, comparing their features, and formulating our like own base, our own based on what we found. And here, what uh, this is what we uncovered this far. So um, we have found four separate awards organized by, as you can see, different institutions and countries. And we noted some um, common themes, some recurrence uh, similarities among them. For instance, um, one of the common requirements across all the award is the group participation. So they ask all um, the participants to be in groups. Um, we can also see that the targeted audience for most of them encompasses bachelors, uh, masters, and PhD students. Although there is one, the, the second one, the pre-urgent innovation, uh, who, um, which targets a, um, a specific student demographic, which is the second and third year uh, in engineering students. Um, we can also take a look at the type of rewards. We can notice that all of them offers financial rewards, but um, um, there is also one uh, that goes um, beyond that, uh, that offers perks like uh, individual interviews with professional, or that reward also uh, the universities uh, that uh, bring the most student work. So by looking at this award, we, what we can do is that we can pick out ideas that will suit our goals. Um, for example, like our prize may involve group participation, or it might target a specific uh, student demographic. Um, and we might even decide to reward, reward sorry, both student and universities. So, well, this benchmarking is really like first a key to understand how awards are structured and really um, something to help us really shape our own prize accordingly. Now let's take a look to our little experiment. So in addition to conducting this benchmark, uh, we will also conduct a little experiment. So this year we are introducing a Codemo prize in the prize challenge. So um, prize is a project that uh, engages the students in creating products or services that align with the market. And after that, the best project can be selected to participate to the challenge, which offer various prizes. And this year, uh, well, we have decided to include the uh, a Codemo prize in it. So uh, for this experiment, the students were invited to volunteer to participate to uh, the special Codemo prize. And again, uh, through this initiative, our aim is really to gain a comprehensive understanding of what a Codemo prize could be uh, and how it could be structured. Um, yeah. So uh, some information about uh, this 
um, this event. So, like I said, there's a total of four groups that volunteered and whose project have uh, five O like components on it. Uh, the students were asked to prepare one uh, additional pitch to the former project presentation, uh, incorporating some elements on organization 5.0. Uh, as for the jury, uh, they plan to uh, have a, a special Codemo jury among all of them. And uh, the award ceremony is scheduled for May 22nd. Uh, so we like, what well, we suggest to do like a little feedback on the results for both the experiment and the benchmark in June during the first innovation day, as well as providing you a brief overview of like a first structure of the international awards. So I hope that I was clear enough uh, if you have some questions. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Elisette. Um, yes, we have time for any reaction or mm -hmm. question on the fact that, yeah, we need both to have local national prices, making possible later to uh, uh, select uh, international winners among all the countries. Mm -hmm. Seems to be clear, no, no question for the moment. Okay, good. So no, no difficulty, it seems. So uh, you were very clear in your <laughs> organization and uh, uh, certainly universities have, have already, yes, internally included this objective in their um, in their vision. Okay. So, uh, yes, we carry on with the uh, next uh, step. Yes, so we, we propose now to to present you a, a process. Um, Elisette will present you a process uh, in order to, to guide you in the academic deployment, the deployment of the certification, as well as the organization of the local price. Okay, so before uh, looking at the, pro uh, the proposal, let's first review the, the objective of each task. So um, for the, the first one, for the 4.1, uh, is so the identification of the 11 academic path and where to deploy it, uh, to deploy, sorry, the certification, and it has to be done by June. And then uh, for the task 4.2, uh, by is that by October, the catalyzer must have identified the opportunities for the national awards that fit the modalities of the international one. And to do so and uh, to help you in this process, like we want to um, hear your initiatives, your ideas about that. And we propose like conducting a survey followed by, um, sorry, followed by interviews. Um, so uh, this survey will like provide you with an opportunity to share your thoughts on the overall structure of the award, as well as any educational initiatives you may have in mind that could support the certification. So you will have a designated uh, time frame of 15 days, starting from April 15th, um, to complete this survey. And once you have filled out the survey, uh, you will have to send it back to me 
And following this, we will uh, schedule individual uh, interviews with, uh, with each of you to really delve deeper into your contributions. And these interviews uh, are slated for uh, the month of May. And it will allow us really to clarify any ambiguous aspect and thoroughly discuss your suggestions. And um, open complexion, completion sorry, of the survey and the interviews, we really aim to uh, propose, like I said before, like an idea uh, of uh, the price, uh, of the price structure, sorry, uh, uh, during the, um, uh, the first innovation day in Bergamo. Uh, so again, if you have any feedback or advices, uh, you are welcome to share it. And uh, it would be nice if you could uh, indicate in the chat the contact details of the person to whom uh, I will have to send the, the form. It would be nice. So for each university, uh, if you can already uh, today in the chat indicate uh, the persons for uh, further contacts. Uh, if we don't have it today, we, we will uh, ask it for tomorrow. <laughs> Just one question, Xavier. Uh, uh, there are 11 uh, certification paths, but uh, each partner, how many should propose? I think not 11 from everyone. No, no uh, 11, it's, um, it's the total amount. I, 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 I let uh, uh, Nathalie answer you. Yes, thank you for the Question, Adrian. Indeed, it's uh, it's better to clarify that now. Uh, actually, at Min Saint Etienne, we plan to work on three academic certification paths. So it means that the five other universities um, must plan to work on one or two academic certification paths. Okay, at least one, much. and if you are. Another one, it could be, it could be great. Yeah. Yes, we are six uh, universities, uh, 11 paths. It's nearly uh, uh, two per universities. Uh, we make a bit more. So uh, keep in mind the objective of two uh, per university. And when not possible, we reduce to one if really it's not possible. So thank you. I can see first answers concerning the contacts. I thank you very much to everybody, every universities. So, okay. So thank you to, to all of you for uh, attending to this uh, kickoff meeting. Um, so we, we have finished with this uh, presentation and we, you can find our mail contact here on the right of the slide if needed. And we are delighted to in advance to, to meet you again uh, in uh, Bergamo uh, for the innovation days to provide you the first feedback. Thank you. And thank you very much, Natalie, because uh, I think yeah, you, you have brought uh, a lot of clarification and uh, interesting input to uh, yes. help everybody to uh, implement uh, Codemo. Thank you very much. Please, I want to ask yes. Xavier later, after the meeting, Rax May or other colleague could share the uh, or including the partage file uh, folder, uh, all presentation, because 
we take some notes, we make some print screens, but we're a lot of information. So it's better to have it up to date, let's say. Yeah, we will do that uh, with the colleagues. Perhaps Elena will uh, help us. Yes, sure. Okay, thank you. And certainly next week, uh, I will have time to give you also the minutes of the meeting. Yeah. So uh, all colleagues, for example, um, Luca, ULBS, all the colleagues who have presented, uh, Spain, uh, Valencia, and Pedacova uh, Svilupo, please um, don't forget to send me uh, uh, your, your slides to facilitate sharing. Um, you can send them by email or directly. Uh, we are going to create uh, very quickly today uh, a direct directory on uh, uh, the sharing space for that meeting. So if it's uh, easier, you can put them on this sharing space directly also. Yeah, we will upload. Thank you. Uh, I saw that there, I think it's already has been a folder, yeah. For Omelab, I uploaded the slides um, there. So the folder is uh, already here and you can already upload. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, and you have the, <laughs> the right link in the chat. Thank you, Yulia. <laughs> and uh, then I think it's the end of our meeting. Uh, so the last words to close uh, the meeting to highlight uh, further steps, but I think it was uh, quite clearly highlighted by the different presentations. So it's just a, a short reminder from uh, my, my part. Um, what we have in the next six months, well, the next six months is uh, quite important because it's really the preparation of uh, deployment activities later on. So uh, yeah, still a quite active period. So um, concerning work package three, we can underline that uh, uh, we have to define next uh, more precisely uh, the certification paths and uh, how to deliver batches, et cetera. So we have a, a very good plan and vision with Thomas and we have to make it uh, operational now uh, so that we could uh, after next meeting uh, really uh, certify uh, people. And jointly to this task, we have work package four and five and uh, it was clearly underlined that uh, we have to define the curricula until uh, uh, months, uh, well, June for a work package four and uh, to, uh, to have a first version for the university and academic curricula or certification paths more. And then in September uh, to uh, have a definitive version of them. And then for vocational training paths, also uh, the next uh, six months are uh, quite uh, structuring. Uh, we need in month 12, that means in next October, to have also uh, a very good first definition of these uh, vocational training paths. But we can see that uh, the work is really well, well engaged. And then of course, uh, we have the case study, so the objective together with work package six is to identify, uh, not to develop, but at least to identify uh, 24 case study uh, for months 12. So that means that's the next meeting uh, all together also. So this is the reason why uh, we are going to uh, uh, propose you uh, a way to to achieve that in the next uh, coming uh, coming months. So we will have a first uh, a small meeting as uh, demanded by Luca, uh, with uh, perhaps ULBS, uh, Luca and Vincent Etienne, 
uh, to uh, to clarify the, the process. Uh, and in parallel to these key elements, of course, the platform is still in the development, and uh, we we will discuss it during the meeting. So uh, this is a, a clear vision of what we have to build in the next six months. And I just remind you that our next meeting will be a physical meeting. It will be organized in uh, Spain by uh, Valencia, according to our uh, programmation. And uh, yes, we are going to exchange a bit with uh, uh, with Valencia to propose you perhaps a doodle to fix in October uh, the, the best date for uh, everybody. So uh, we will first discuss the potential dates with uh, Valencia and then I propose you uh, all that. Um, if there are last comments or <laughs> questions or, uh, or remarks, Xavier, just uh, first to congratulate to all leading of the project and uh, the good uh, relation that we create between us as all partners. Uh, just uh, if it is possible, uh, uh, kindly ask for uh, Angel and the Valencia team if we could plan in the first half of the month because uh, the end part of the month will be also CBU Innovation Days, will be ProV Conference. And if it is possible in the first two weeks, could be better. Okay, we will do a doodle to see when the agenda can switch for everyone. Thank you very much. Are, are the constraints for the partners? Good for uh, Thomas also. Good. Okay. Um, and so, um, Thank you for your comment, Adrian. And uh, uh, I, I would also uh, ask, uh, add this comment that I'm also thanking all the partners because I think that there is a real uh, collaborative work in that uh, project. Uh, every, everybody is taking in charge uh, his responsibilities uh, in a very engaged way. And so I'm happy with uh, all of uh, you. The, the consortium, thank you very much. And I think that uh, we are at least one of the first project on the uh, 5.0, and not the first one, but uh, at the international level, uh, one of the first one. And I think that all of us, we are gaining maturity on uh, these uh, issues and gaining also more, uh, more interest for the future. And so, uh, this is create, creating added value, I, I think, for all uh, all partners. And uh, the philosophy also of that 5.0 transition is also quite interesting to go further than the digitalization, not forgetting digitalization, but uh, making it uh, a more societal um, uh, oriented uh, transformation. And this is, I, I think, quite uh, quite positive. Uh, so thank you very much to all the, the teams. Uh, we can perhaps take a last uh, photo <laughs> with the team so you can, all of you, uh, put the video on. And um, Elena, Elena is going to take the photos. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So we keep in contact because we have quite a lot of uh, of meetings in the coming months and then um, uh, we will meet again physically in Spain in uh, in six uh, six months more or less. Thank you very much. Thank you have very much. Good, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye. I'm looking forward to see you in Valencia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> certainly. We look forward to... to we'll to be good. We'll be good.